Hello everyone, welcome to this series on the history of English literature. And in this video, we are going to discuss the development of poetic forms in the age of Pope. Introduction The age of Pope, also known as the Augustan age or the neoclassical period, was a time of significant transformation in English literature, particularly in poetry. This era, spanning the early 18th century, is marked by the dominance of classical ideals, emphasizing order, decorum, and rationality. These principles profoundly influenced the development of various poetic forms, shaping the nature and content of poetry during this period. The Disappearance of Lyric Poetry One of the most notable changes in the poetry of the age of Pope is the near disappearance of the lyric form, which had flourished in early periods. The lyric traditionally a short, personal poem expressing the poet's emotions was largely supplanted by more formal and structured poetic forms that aligned with the classical emphasis on reason and restraint light and artificial nature. The few lyrics that survived in this period were often light, artificial and lacking the emotional depth that characterized earlier lyric poetry. Notable examples include some of Matthew Pryor's shorter pieces, John Gay's The Beggar's Opera and Alan Ramsey's The Gentle Shepherd. These works retained some lyrical qualities but were more concerned with the wit and elegance than the profound emotional expression. The Survival of the Ode The Ode, a poetic form with ancient Greek origins, also experienced a decline in the age of Pope. However, it did not disappear entirely and continued to be used, albeit in a weakened form. Pindaric Ode the Pindaric Ode, characterized by its formal structure and elevated style, persisted during this time but was often executed with limited success. Alexander Pope, one of the era's leading poets, wrote a few odes, including On St. Cecilia's Day, which was an imitation of John Dryden's earlier work. Despite Pope's prominence, his odes were not particularly well received, reflecting the general decline of this once popular form. Another example of the Pindaric Ode from this period is the work of Lady Winchelsea, who, like Pope, struggled to achieve the grandeur and impact of earlier odes. The Rise of Satiric Poetry In contrast to the declining forms of lyric and ode, satiric poetry flourished during the age of Pope becoming one of the most prominent and successful genres of the time. High Quality Satire The period is known for its sharp, witty and often biting sterical verse. Pope's The Dunciad stands as a masterpiece of the personal satire, targeting the perceived dullness and incompetence of his literary and political enemies. Unlike the more serious political satires of the previous century, such as Dryden's works, the satire of Pope's era tended to be lighter, brighter, and more cynical, reflecting the changing social and political climate. Expansion of sterical forms While the heroic couplet remained the dominant form of satire, satirical elements began to spread to other verse forms as well. For example, the octosyllabic couplets used by Jonathan Swift, Pryor, and Gay allowed for a more playful and rhythmic expression of satire. Additionally, Pope's later years saw the development of the epistolary form of satire, where satire was conveyed through poetic letters, as exemplified by his epistles of Horace imitated. Narrative Poetry and Revival of the Ballad Narrative poetry, which tells the story through verse, also saw significant development during the age of Pope. Translation of Homer One of the most ambitious narrative poems of the period was Pope's translation of Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. 
these translations were not only literary achievements but also commercial successes solidifying pope's reputation as a leading poet of his time in contrast the period also produced a number of less successful epic poems such as the works of sir richard blackmore which were criticized for their lack of vitality and originality ballad revival the age of pope also witnessed a slight revival of the ballad a narrative poem with roots in folk tradition though the ballads of this period such as those imitated by gay and prior were often criticized for being bloodless and lacking the raw energy of earlier ballads their existence indicates a continued interest in narrative forms and a respect for literary tradition the popularity of the pastoral pastoral poetry which idealizes rural life and landscapes became highly popular during the age of pope reflecting the classical admiration for simplicity and order artificial pastoral the pastoral of this period was often highly artificial serving as a vehicle for formal elegance rather than authentic representation of rustic life this type of poetry was appealing for several reasons it provided a veneer of rustic simplicity to otherwise highly structured compositions it was seen as a refined and elegant form and it was endorsed by classical precedent with ancient poets frequently utilizing pastoral themes notable pastoral poets of the time include pope and ambrose phillips both of whom contributed to the genre with works that while elegant often lacked the genuine connection of nature found in earlier pastoral poetry conclusion the age of pope was a time of significant transformation in english poetry marked by the triumph of classical ideals over the passionate and emotional forms of earlier periods while lyric poetry and the ode declined the period saw the rise of satirical poetry the development of narrative forms and the popularity of the pastoral these changes reflect the broader cultural and intellectual currents of the time as poets sought to align their work with the principles of order reason and decorum that defined the age through these developments the age of pope left a lasting impact on the evolution of english poetry so this was the discussion on the evolution of poetic forms in the age of pope we will meet in the next video and discuss some other topic until then goodbye and thank you